Jeremiah chapter 27 up and over the halfway point in the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah king of Judah came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord saying thus saith the Lord to me make thee bonds and yokes the kind of yokes you see with oxen and put them upon thy neck <laughs> You know, these prophets are a character in the illustration that God will have them to do. Can you imagine a modern Laodicean scholar? I want you to make some yokes and I want you to wear them. I mean, you can't even get the Laodicean to go and preach the gospel. they got to have other entertainment things. So Jeremiah makes yokes and he's wearing them. And send them to the king of Edom, that's Jacob's brother, to the king of Moab and the king of the Ammonites, that's the children of Lot, the king of Tyrus, the kingdom of Zidon. That's where Jezebel comes from. By the hand of the messengers, which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, the king of Judah. Now, what happens now is what Jeremiah is not going to go preach. Somebody's going to preach for him. Because it says, verse 4, And command them to say unto their masters, the king. So Jeremiah is going to hand the, this yoke over to others. <clears throat> and with this, I want you to go back to your kings and your government and proclaim this message. Now we learned in chapter 1, Jeremiah is not only a prophet to Judah, but he's also a prophet to the nation. And here we go. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, creation, no evolution. The man and the beast that are, are upon the ground didn't happen by chance by my great power and my outstretched arm have given it unto whom it seemeth meet unto me including President Biden okay the, the, the elections were stolen they stole them from Trump oh maybe God put them in office or maybe Satan put them in office Matthew chapter 4 Luke chapter 4. What are you going to do about it? Well, we're going to vote next time. Well, God already eliminated your vote to get who God wanted in office or Satan wanted in office. I'm not saying either or. I don't know. There it is. God puts who he wants in office, in charge. And if the Satan, if Satan wants somebody in charge, he's got to get permission from God. But he has that authority too scripture and Paul tells the Christian where to pray for him and now have I given all these lands not just Judah into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon my servant that's the second time and the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him so God has given the entire lot to Nebuchadnezzar, not only the people, not only the city, including the beast. It's a worldwide judgment. And friend, that's going on today. And God wants you to submit to him, not Nebuchadnezzar. And if you won't, all nations shall serve him. And his son, and his son's son, Belsizer, unto the very time of his of his land come, Daniel and Belsizer. Cyrus comes. Then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that nation and kingdom which shall which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar king about. I refuse, we're not going to do it, we're not going to listen to that God. 
that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon. So that yoke that was told by Jeremiah pictures Babylon. And even Jeremiah who was put in that yoke, Jeremiah will be subject to the king of Babylon. As all the nations we mentioned before. That nation will I punish. Save the Lord with sword, war, with famine, with pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. So, you're either going to give yourself to Nebuchadnezzar and live, or you're going to rebel and it's going to be death and destruction. That's your choice. Therefore, hearken not unto your prophets. Now remember, he's talking to all the nations. Nor your diviners. Nor your dreamers. Nor your enchanters. Nor your sorcerers. Which speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon. That's a lie. For they prophesy a lie unto you. Listen, for every good man that for God has, Satan has two of his preachers and teachers out there. For every one good man of God. To remove you far from your land. So you're going to leave your land no matter what. You can do it under hostility or you can do it just by what God tells you to do. And that I should drive you out and you shall perish. But the nations that will but the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, you do, you will obey and serve him. Those who I let remain still in their land, own land, so you'll stay saith the Lord, and they shall till it, farm, and dwell therein. So, you're going to be under the Babylonian authority, and some will get to stay in the land, if you give rule to Babylon. Now, if God did that to America today, well, you know, listen, if America gives up their freedom and their, their government, oh, no, 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 no! We're not going to give up our freedom. It's guns and, and, and the flag and the Bible lasts. You're going to take my gun out of my cold, dead hands. And God say, okay, fine. You're either going to listen to me or you're going to rebel. That's what God's telling them. Submit yourselves to another government, another leader, approved by God, who that man is a servant of God. I thank also Zedekiah, the king of Judah, according to all these words. Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. <laughs> It's that simple. Why will you die? Because of rebellion. Because you know we're going to fight for the truth. We're going to fight for our nation. We're going to fight for our rights. We're going to fight for our liberty. Maybe God doesn't want you to. No, oh, we're going to do what we're going to do. I guarantee there are nations who thought that. Thou and thy people by the sword, war, by famine, by pestilence. As the Lord has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of... You're not going to do the... What, listen, if you don't serve the king of Babylon, you're not doing what God told you to do. Well, you know, we're, we're religious and we're going to fight God bless America and, God, and one nation under God. We're the, eh, that's what England thought one time too. That's exactly what England thought. And God broke them. He 
You can speak against America. No, I speak against the truth. I stand for the truth and right. And if you're not going to do the truth and you reject God, you reject the Bible, and you reject Jesus Christ, and you reject Calvary as America has, I reject you. And that's somebody who preaches to Americans about the salvation of Jesus Christ and has been threatened with, 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 with prison and, and, and threatened with every kind of thing in America, on the streets of America. Don't tell me I'm not I'm anti-American. I preach the gospel. What do you do? I've grown Christians. Therefore hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you. Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you. Like I said, for every true man of God, the devil's got two or three. The devil's got the mega churches, he's got the, the television, he's got the, the radio. I know a man down in the Lucia County radio, he's lying to the people. He allegedly lied to me. The word is serve Babylon. Serve another nation and God will take you. Because that other nation is God's servant is what God told you to do. And pride will have you to be militant, nationalism, and for my country and wave the flag. And that's not what God wants you to, that's not what God wants these people to do. God says, I have not sent them, the false prophets, saith the Lord. Yet they prophesy a lie in my name. That happens in 2021. When I was I was in the hospital in March, I was in the hospital in, in April. Every once in a while when I had nothing to do and all that with the television, I would flick and turn on the two channels that had the preacher. Lord forbid I couldn't put up with Olsen. I couldn't even watch that guy for two minutes. That guy was... And when you had uh, Myers up there, I was just yelling at her, so I turned her off. But the other ones, I listened, you know, God and Jesus and the Lord, and, and the Lord laid this message on my heart. And Shut up. God did not send you. Prosperity. Everything will be great. You think Paul would have sat under that message? <laughs> Broken and, and, and weak and, and, and suffering and pain? Oh yeah, prosperity. <laughs> Just because they say the name of Jehovah, the name of Jesus, does not mean they are right. Paul tells us that there's another Jesus another gospel, and another spirit. And I'll tell you more, and more to be warned in, you know, Yahweh. When they start speaking Yahweh, get away from them. Because that's not even the pronunciation of that name. There's no vowels in that name. No one knows how to pronounce that, and you know how to put Yahweh. Get go, bye. And then there's there's other names and all that, and when they get to you, the Greek and all of this, that's that that tells you, bye. It's plain and simple. Be warned, there are people who will prophesy and preach in the name of God, Jesus. And the Bible says, God said, there are people who do it and they lie. That I may drive you out, and that ye may you might perish, ye and the prophets that prophesied with unto you. Nothing's worse than those false prophets, false teachers, false preachers, false pastors, all that, and they end up in hell with you. That's a shame, especially when you can get a King James sixteen eleven Bible. In print, hey, I got mine at, at, a, at, a, at a good bookstore here in Daytona Bay. You can get it online. Not like you got to go far and wide to go get a King James Bible. 
And let me also tell you something. Just because they're a King James, King James 1611 church doesn't mean they're correct either. Let, let me just throw that out there. That's why the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved of God, a worker that needs not to be changed, rightly divided. you got to rightly divide ministries today. And you can't say, oh, we're the King James Bible believing church is going to be right. Really? Imagine, imagine me saying that. I just probably just broke the mold for many Baptists. Also, I spank to the priest. This is Jeremiah the priest. <laughs> Speaking to the priest. And to all this people, the Jews. Saying. So he's had a message to the, to the nation. Now he goes to the, to the, to the people of Judah and... And the priest. Remember, that's his people. Jeremiah is a priest. This would be like you going home to your home family and say, Hey, you guys are wrong. You're living in sin. You need to repent and get right. I've done that. And you don't want to do that to a Catholic family. You sure don't want to do that to a Jewish family. Hey, I believe in Jesus. They'll have a mock funeral. They'll throw you out. I know a couple of Jews that's happened. They're saved and their families, uh, I'm done with them. They're dead. You know how quick the Jews churned on Paul? Hey, he's great. He's killing those Christians. He's going after those Christians. Sure, I'll sign those babies. All right, good job, Paul. He's a Christian now. Go get him. We got to kill him. Hearken not to the words of your prophets, that prophesied unto you, saying, Behold, the vessel of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon. But they prophesy a lie unto you. Now, before we, what happened is Nebuchadnezzar will come into Jerusalem three times. And each, the final time, it, you know, he finishes the job. But the first two times, he takes the kings, he takes the king's family, and he takes the smith, the carpenter, and he starts taking idols from the temple. And the third time is when he'll take it off. And you know he takes it off because Belshazzar calls him out at the great feast. And they start drinking the wine in, in the cups of the Lord and toasting to the gods of wood, paper, and money. And what the prophets are saying is everything that Nebuchadnezzar is taking is going to come back. He'll be back. Don't you worry about it. We're not going to go to Babylon. And, and, and Babylon won't be the... We, we are the victors. We are the victors. We are the victors. God's up in heaven saying, No, you're not. I'm proud to be... Uh, don't they know... Uh, Gabriel, don't they know pride's a sin? Don't they know to be proud is a sin? Evidently they don't. They haven't read the word. So the false prophets are teaching, hey, it's all coming back home. Not now. It'll come back under Nehemiah and Ezra. Hearken not unto them. Say, serve the king of Babylon and live. Wherefore should this city be laid waste? You know what Lamentation writes about? Guess what? They didn't hearken. Guess what? The church doesn't hearken. I don't think the rapture, oh great, just come on, just, just bring them back up, just bring them home and all that. I don't think it's like that. I was like, I can't stand them. Bring them up here. Jesus, go get them. Get them now. Because listen, we're, we're not going up as the bride, as in fine, white, and all that. Man, when Jesus comes back to call his bride, when he, at the rapture, he's going to find most of his bride sleeping naked with the devil. He's going to find his bride smooching with Satan. And he's going to find his bride inside her church houses. Satan is sitting in the front row.
He's going to find his bride in sin. He's going to find very few that are faithful and going about the Lord's work. There will be churches in the world. If the rapture will happen at, at the time of the church service, there will be churches in the world that will go through all the singing, all the collecting of the tithe, all the preaching, all the, the announcements, all the, the shaking of hands, and they'll walk out of the church and head off to wherever they go after church, not even realizing that the rapture happened and not one person in that church disappeared. Except for the babies in the nursery. And maybe the young ones in the, the, the young class. And you say, well, you mean, well, there are not many churches today that have nurseries and young. They're dying out because they're old and frail and they don't evangelize. Now what? If they be prophets, this is God speaking to Jeremiah. If the word of God be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord. I mean, if you're really a prophet, if you really preach in the word, get praying. That the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord, there's two vessels left, in the house of the king of Judah. That's the king's own personal stuff. At Jerusalem, go not to bed. Listen, okay, listen, if you're really living right, start praying. It, it doesn't, now what's the only way we'll keep the vessels in the Lord's house and keep the vessels in the king's house? Judah has to surrender to Babylon. Now, who's going to pray that prayer? Again, let's say God told America, I want you to give up your liberty. I want you to give up being named American. I want you to give it all up. Uh, if it's, if it's, and I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying if it would be a signed decree like in Jeremiah 27, how many American Christians would actually listen to God and do it? Well, let me bring it this way. How many American Christians, those that put America first, that are in America today living, and they're saved, and they're in America, but they know and God has told them and they have a calling for God to go over on a foreign mission field. And they won't because I'm not leaving America. How many... I know a church right now, they have a school. And God has called those men to go to this ch school, this church, and learn, kind of, and when they graduate, they stay under the, 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 the wings of that pastor and won't move anywhere, anywhere else. Now, I heard one man out there, well, you know, I got a great job. And, well, I, you know, I, I'm not going to leave the pastor in this church and all that. And I heard no one say, well, I want God to give me a fully furnished church. <laughs> With people and all that. You're not going to try to start? No, no, no. It has to be, you know. And this man has gone out and met with church. And all. There wasn't enough people there for me. That's what I say. For thus said, Lord, concerning the pillars. Those are those two pillars that Solomon named. Can't think of the names right now. One of them is his grandpa, Boaz, or Jock. And concerning the sea, that's where they would watch. That's the sea that Solomon made. 
They would wash, the priests would wash, and they wash the offering. And concerning the bases, that's what is on, that's what the sea is on. There are oxen, or lions, oxen, oxen, twelve of them. Four east, four west, four south, four north. Concerning the residue of the vessels with, that remain in the city. So there are still things there. There are still knick-knack, paddywhack, give the dog a bone in Jerusalem. Not for long. Unless, unless. All right, Lord. You tell King of Babylon we'll give up, we'll, we'll surrender to what you say the word of God. You, you t I don't know how we're going to do it, but you tell us how to do it, and we'll do it. Do they? Book of Lamentations says, no, they didn't do it. Which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took not. He will later. When he carried away captive Janiah Jehoiakim, the son of Jehoiakim of Judah from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. So Nebuchadnezzar's army has been there before. He's carried away people and things. God gives Judah three strikes. The third strike, that's it. Listen, America is in pride. America is proud just as Judah is and not listening to God just like Judah. <clears throat> and the church is just as worse. I'll show you something in a moment. Lord willing. Yea, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels remain in the house of the Lord. Let's do stuff there. And in the house of the king of Judah and Jerusalem, they shall be carried to Babylon. <laughs> you ain't going to get right. And they shall, there shall they be unto the day that I visit them, Ezra and Nehemiah. Saith the Lord, then will I bring them up and restore them to this. There's, it's coming back. Jeremiah says they're coming back. You tell them, Jeremiah, it's coming back, but not now. And because the false prophets have said, well, all the vessels are not going to go and the ones over there are coming back. God says, okay, I'm going to eliminate them all. Now let me show you, think, Revelation chapter 2. Let me see. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. The persecuted church. Let me show you something. Revelation 2 8. And the angel of the church of Samaria write, These were persecuted. This is the second church of the church history. These things say the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Jesus. I know thy works. So we have works, not for salvation. And tribulation, troubles and problems. And poverty. But thou art rich. You see that? You're poor. You're broke. <laughs> but thou art rich. That's God speaking to the church. The church is sitting there, man, we're unfinanced. We're, we're living by the, the skin of our teeth. God says thou art rich. That's Samaria. Go to Revelation chapter 3. I'll show you the prideful church. Verse 14. Watch this. Unto the church of the lives of the scenes, right? These are to say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. See that? But let's move down to verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich. That's the church saying it, not God. Increase with goods and have need of nothing. I mean, we got the glass cathedral, we got the mega churches, we've got the sound system, we've got the choir, we got the robes, we got the, 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 the fellowship halls, we've got the, the, the we got great money in our bank accounts. 
We've got a lot of people in Sunday school. We got buses. We got bands. We got it all. Dun, 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 because thou sayest, I am rich, increased with good, and have need of nothing. Now, this is what God says. Remember what God said to the Samaritan church? This is what God says to us, the Laodicean church. Knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. The second church age period, God, we're, we're, man, we only had, we only had more. We could do more for you, but we're being persecuted. We're being killed. They're torturing us. Lord, God, I know you're rich. And this church age, oh, we're just great. We're just wonderful. We got a great church. We got a great pastor. We're just so wonderful. How great we are. God says, you're poor. This is the attitude of Judah in the time of Jeremiah. What do you mean God's going to destroy this place? We're the Jews. They had that atmosphere when Jesus was around in 70 AD. God destroyed them. This is where the church is. This is where America is. That's where England was. We're poor. You can't do nothing to us until you mess with Israel. That's where Adolf Hitler was. Man, we're conquering the world. We're conquering to keep on doing it. Now start killing the Jews. Oh, now you're in trouble. That's Alexander the Great, man. He's conquering the world. I believe he died of alcoholism disease. And you know what America's not learning from history? Hey, when you get great and you get prideful, you get wonderful and you get wonderful and great and pride, you fall. Exactly what the scriptures say. Judah's going to fall pretty soon. I'll tell you right now, America's going to fall. She may say one nation under God, God bless America, and ain't the God of Israel. Because the organization that's against Israel and hates Israel and fights against Israel is based in New York State. And America is a solemn member of the United Nations. We will always be a member of the United Nations. 